Thank you, Ralph. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, as Ralph presented, my name is Sandra Nielsen. Um, I am coming from Siemens Gamesa company uh, and will have an opportunity uh, and uh, my big pleasure to present the, this standard to all of you. Uh, I will go through the presentation uh, agenda for it um, and I would like to uh, have a chance to go through all of it before we have questions answer session. Um, it will take me around 10 minutes to, to go through Slideware and afterwards your questions will be welcome. So please type your questions uh, as soon as you have one and we will try to answer all of them. So welcome to Advanced Rescue Training uh, Standard that has been released uh, in October 1st um, this year. So it's a, a very new uh, standard. Uh, I'll just have an, another slide now, should be. Just give me a second, yes. So I will go and uh, uh, we will present the speakers who will be uh, talking uh, uh, today and answering your questions. Um, and our Global Wind uh, Organization Working Group for the standard. Uh, I will. Uh, uh, explain why advanced rescue training standard uh, was born um, the modular setup of it um, and also uh, who was involved from the training providers and our pilot tests so this is the agenda for today's meeting and then question answer session in the end so um, as i uh, presented myself shortly uh, my name is sandra nielsen I work as a safety competence manager in Siemens Gamesa. Uh, my specialty is in managing training development projects and uh, implementing diverse uh, training solutions uh, worldwide for Siemens Gamesa. Uh, responsible for safety training portfolio and uh, safety competency management of wind technicians. So this is basically my role in my company. Um, I would uh, give the word to Per, my colleague, who will present himself shortly. Well, thank you, Sandra. Um, my name is Per Nurup. Uh, I'm a, uh, a team colleague with, uh, with uh, Sandra Nelson. So we share an office working uh, with uh, training development within the uh, safety portfolio in uh, Siemens Gamesa. Uh, so I would uh, refer to as a learning and development uh, specialist. Uh, my background is sort of uh, trifold, uh, not just within uh, adult learning, training and, and uh, didactics, but uh, within fire and rescue service as well, and um, within uh, the the profession of um, HSE. So thank you, Sandra. Okay, my. Uh, next colleague who was uh, a part of the uh, working group for the standard is Kai Sukinik. Kai, would you present yourself shortly? Yes, uh, thank you, Sandra. Hello, my name is Kai Sukinik. Uh, right now I'm working for Vestas as a project manager uh, for training. So I have to deal with a lot of training standards uh, worldwide. Started in Vestas uh, as technical and safety instructor and have delivered a lot of yeah, safety training. Later on, I took over the function as uh, team leader and uh, later on training manager. So I have been in contact with a lot of training standards and implementation of standards. Yeah, my background uh, is more technical based. So and uh, later on, I got the chance to uh, learn a lot of things on safety on the wind turbine. Thank you, Sandra. Okay, thank you, Kai. Um, and the last speaker um, uh, who will join us a bit later is uh, Mats van Amen, uh, and he is the uh, HSE specialist at uh, MHI Vestas, um, Master Environment and Resource Management, Safety Officer, uh, also coordinator, um, and uh, basically with a background of, of being a health and safety environment specialist. So he will join us just uh, later and support uh, all the questions and answers that need to be given. Yes. 
So Global Wind Working uh, Group members, as you see here in, in the picture, uh, we had a broad representation uh, of the members for this uh, standard development. Uh, we had uh, Pierre from Oerstel, uh, Pierre and Kel uh, and myself from Siemens Gamesa. We had uh, Kai from uh, Vestas, Mats from MHI Vestas, and we had Jorgen from uh, GE uh, representing this team. Uh, we had a lot of uh, developing hours together uh, and uh, tried to do our best uh, to, to make this uh, standard uh, into what it is uh, at this moment. So this is uh, shortly about the, the team behind the standard. Um, so why advanced rescue standards? Uh, why uh, we need the training? Uh, so the main purpose, of course, uh, that our turbines uh, they are becoming uh, and uh, are installed uh, in uh, large uh, and remote uh, uh, areas. Um, and as a consequence, uh, working in remote areas will create longer response times by professional emergency response teams, as well as uh, we all know that uh, professional responders not uh, always are able to climb the turbine and do the rescue. So it uh, leaves the technicians uh, themselves uh, in the situation where they have to do the rescue and prepare um, the injured person um, for, for the professional uh, help uh, in the end. So they need to take the injured person down uh, or up so a helicopter can rescue um, uh, the person. So um, the training elevates to rescue our self-reliance and enable successful transport of a colleague who cannot self-evacuate to an assembly point where professional emergency responders can provide care. So this is basically the, the purpose. Um, so training aims to control the risks associated with the rescue operations, ensuring a more efficient rescue operation from a wind turbine. As we all know, um, uh, working at heights uh, has a, a basic rescue uh, exercises in it. Um, but we, what we experiencing in, in the uh, industry that we really need to prepare technicians in a more difficult situations where rescues are complicated um, and uh, with a enclosed space and crawl space and uh, uh, requiring a lot of uh, physical, um, uh, yeah, efforts, efforts uh, to perform the rescue. So, um, this is why, uh, more or less. So the aim of, of the course is to enable the delegates to perform casualty rescue operation using standard wind turbine industry rescue and fall protection equipment and predefined rescue methods and techniques exceeding those of working at height. Main objectives uh, that we are hoping delegates uh, are able to when they completed the course assess and determine the rescue strategy and the evacuation route for various rescue scenarios, apply rescue methods and techniques in performing descending and ascending rescue operations in a wind turbine, apply cervical color rescue stretchers, pine board, manual and power driven lowering raising rescue system, rescue device, pulley system or similar. And more or less uh, on top of these uh, very uh, general objectives, we have a lot of uh, sub learning objectives uh, for the standard that uh, you probably already know by reading the standards. Uh, we also um, are wishing for that uh, our technicians are able to do the rescues uh, as a lone rescuer, uh, but also in the teams uh, when there are more than one um, in the team available. Yes. Um, so the med modular setup for the standard is that we have a one day hub rescue module uh, focusing on blade to hub to ground uh, with outside evacuation. Then we have nacelle tower and basement module uh, of two days where uh, enclosed space and crawl space rescues are practiced. Um, and inside as well as outside evacuation as well. 
and we have two modules of single rescuer um, kind of uh, teaching the mindset the strategy planning and techniques for a lone rescuer uh, especially when technicians working in teams of two and professional help is is uh, uh, far away um, and the single rescuer we have uh, half a day module for hub and then half a day module for the cell tower and basement again reflecting the 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 standard as it is we also have a solution where a combination of all modules can be taught in in one combined module um, meaning that hub nacelle tower basement and single rescue both modules are covered um, and that gives us three days of training so it's shorter to take it combined than separately um, this is kind of the overall structure and setup setup um, so again uh, you can see here the duration the validity and uh, add-on modules uh, here um, oh, just let me go back here and um, as you see uh, for the refresher part we have a, a hub model to be repeated the same course uh, of uh, duration of one day as well and then we have um, nacelle tower and basement uh, refresher which includes elements from working a heights refresher so participants who uh, who need to refresh both working a heights and advanced rescue module they, they would be able to do that through nacelle tower and basement module um, yes and for combined art refresher including working heights refresher the duration is three days so basically one day hub module and then a combination of nacelle and working heights refresher um, entry prerequisites for main modules um, is working at heights first aid and manual handling certificates and to repair requisites for add-on modules is uh, respectively for single rescue or hub is hub module and for single rescue or nacelle is nacelle tower and basement rescue so it is uh, building on top uh, modules yes and one of the last slides is basically training providers and and pilot tests that we have uh, been doing uh, uh, through our development work we uh, have got a lot of contribution from mask isaac and wind hunter and 3m training providers giving us uh, providing us feedback um, and then we have uh, conducted a number of pilot tests uh checking different uh, modules um, and uh, also getting a lot of uh, feedback uh, from training providers again uh, so thank you very much to all training providers who have been uh, who has been involved and and uh, very helpful uh, with uh, the feedback yes i believe that is all from my side so Please, um, we can move now to the question and answer session. Um, I, I can see there are a number of questions raised. Um, so we'll start with the first question. Um, I will be reading the questions out loud, out loud and uh, then I will uh, ask my uh, teammates from the working group to answer uh, best they can so first question are the diagrams of the art rescue diagrams an example or will future external evaluations be assigned on these diagrams on page 14 of the art guidelines and how will it be evaluated by the external auditing company okay yeah, can you elaborate? Um, yeah, I think that uh, I need to refer to the uh, to the page uh, 14. I'm not quite clear on on the reference here. Okay. 
let me just then Okay, so the question raised concerns page 14 of the standard. Let me just uh, Let me just check the question. Um, okay, so this concerns the uh, the training facilities, I suppose. Uh, whether the diagrams uh, on page fourteen are uh, is an example or or future external evaluations uh, will be assessed on these diagrams. Uh, so I believe we've agreed um, as as a requirement, as a minimum requirement uh, uh, to be fulfilled uh, is this uh, section uh, of, of page 14 and, and, and the uh, training environment requirements. So, so any training provider um, who wants to do more is, uh, is more than welcome. This is a minimum requirement. Um, I'm not quite sure how it, if at all this will be evaluated in the future, perhaps uh, GWO would be um, would be the one to 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 elaborate on that, uh, Habno or Ralph. Uh, but from my perspective, this is a minimum uh, requirement for physical uh, training facilities uh, to be met, so that we can, in some way or to to some extent, have a training environment that. Um, that represents a wind turbine environment. Uh, so we're talking about uh, a certain level of, of identical elements between a wind turbine environment and the, uh, the training uh, facilities. Yes, so. Right. Um, yes. So just to add to, uh, to your comment, Pierre, um, if everyone goes to page 13, you can see the requirements for the facilities. And that will be audited because it's a requirement. The drawings are, recommend, are recommended dimensions. Um, but yeah, details on page 13 on what will be required for the facilities. Okay. Good. So, next question. 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 question, question. Next question. Good. Mm -hmm. Is there a standard minimum rescue equipment on site? Kai, can you answer this one? Yes, um, there are some uh, minimum standards, let's say, with what we have described on equipment. Uh, um, that is, uh, for example, on page 22, I think, that we have uh, created a list of equipment that has to be covered during the training. Sandra, maybe you can uh, show the page of the standards. I think it's 22 where we have listed the needed equipment for the MTBR. So, but uh, 
it is uh, the training provider's responsibility to uh, make sure that this equipment is available on site or in that training facility. I hope that answers the question. Yep. Perhaps uh, we need to differentiate between uh, emergency response planning uh, rescue equipment uh, requirements as opposed to uh, art training requirements. So this is related to, to equipment required to, to de deliver the training. What equipment is required on site for a, a, any operator as a part of the uh, emergency response planning, that's not part of, of our requirements in the standard. That's up to the, uh, the, the operator. Yes, thank you, Kai and Pierre. And uh, next question is, will Global Wind Organization providers have to provide this level of training or will it be those that choose to provide the training, for example, like the BTT? Pierre, can you elaborate? Uh, is Matt online as well? Uh, yes, I am, uh, Sandra. I'm online as well. Oh, hi, yes. Matt. Hi, Matt. Can you uh, provide a, an answer to this question? I, I'm afraid I missed the question. So can you repeat that for a second? Yes. Will global wind providers have to provide this level of training? Or will it be those that choose to provide the training, for example, like the BTT? Sorry, one more time. Will global wind providers have to provide this level of training? Or will it be those that choose to provide the training, for example, like BTT? You can see the I'm, question I'm on the chat. Yeah. So maybe I can assist here. So it will be up to the training providers whether or not they would like to offer this training. It's optional whether or not they would like to offer this training. Yes, and I, I believe the question might lead to whether the training providers need to be certified or not. Um, so if training providers already certified for BSD or BTT, um, this uh, training will require a separate certification. Yes. Okay. So, and the last question that we have on, on the list, is it, is it right that the manufacturers can make the standard as mandatory, but it is no duty. Well, Pablo, can mandatory. you elaborate? So whether or not manufacturers can make this standard mandatory. Um, so it's not up to manufacturers to decide whether or not the training should be mandatory. No, but it could be, of course, that a manufacturer uh, implement, uh, implements this into their basic management system. And in that case, you could have situation where the manufacturer uh, asks for uh, entering their turbine with a certain uh, certification. That that could be, a, could be the case. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, we have another question. Um, does the basement rescue incorporate elements of confined space restricted access? Mats, can you elaborate? Yes, of course. Um, we've put the, 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 the standard in such a way that we deal with separated items on separated exercises. And of course, you can mix those elements a little bit together. So a basement could be uh, connected to a confined space. However, 
the basement exercise by itself is meant for the the the, the rescue up uh, aspects much more than the the confined space but you could very easily combine those two Pierre, would you like to elaborate a little bit more well i was just considering the uh, the terminology of confined space whether that uh, is in in the question referring to the the legal um, requirements on on confined space regulations. We've we've considered that and discussed that quite uh, quite a bit and decided not to include any uh, concept of confined space because we know it refers to legal requirements, e.g., in the UK or in the uh, United States. So uh, so we've come come up with the uh, an alternative concept of enclosed space and crawl space uh, to not go into any specific uh, legal requirements and train towards legal requirements on, on confined space. Uh, you may all know that uh, the uh, legal requirements of confined space requires quite a lot of uh, planning and uh, uh, documentation wise, you may have specific rescue techniques that uh, may not be included in, in this in this uh, advanced rescue training, e.g. the uh, concept of having a, a personnel go into a confined space uh, area, a sewage area, uh, as an example giving, with a rescue uh, divine to haul him out of the uh, hazardous uh, area uh, in case of uh, he would fall, into, uh, uh, fall ill. So that scenario would be perhaps a, a sort of legal uh, implication and you would need to plan uh, towards that uh, having a confined space in your uh, as part of your your emergency uh, response uh, planning but this is not a scenario uh, and technique specifically included in in, in our uh, art uh, training so there are differences which needs to be dealt with regionally uh, country specifically on uh, legal confined space requirements. Okay, thank you, Matt and Pierre. Next question, um, must the drawing A be connected to drawing B? No. Um, Kai, can you, oh, Matt, can you elaborate? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sandra, I didn't mean to speak before my turn. Uh, no, it does not. If it makes sense, for example, for the exercise, for, for logistic reasons, to put them next to each other or to put them separately, that's all fine. However, we do st uh, state in the standard that it's always beneficial to make logical connections, so to connect a blade to a hub rather than to an cell, for example. So where possible, it's preferred but where it's practical, it's not required. Okay, thank you, Mitz. Um, next question. There are a huge variety of different turbine manufacturers, models and sizes uh, with new models being produced all the time. With the variables for advanced rescue being so vast, how can this possibly be effectively audited as a generalized course? Kai, would you want to elaborate on this question? Yeah, I will try to answer this question. Um, the, the entire advanced rescue training focus on uh, training techniques and uh, procedures to uh, ensure a safe rescue. Um, and here um, we, we have uh, used the facility uh, standards we, or prerequisites uh, that we have described in the in the document as a yeah as a, a facility standard that we can uh, or that can be audited by the external uh, auditor company. Um, that, yeah, that's uh, how we see that. Um, we don't. Uh, we are not able to cover all the different 
varieties on different turbine types of the different manufacturers. So that's the reason why we try to keep that very generic and we focus in the training on the procedures and techniques uh, for, for rescue, for advanced rescue. Thank you, Kyle. Next question. Zip line, shall that be Milan as described on page six? Or can it be other rescue device? Normally, we don't see manufacturer name mentioned. Pierre, can you elaborate? Oh, yeah, that's probably a bit unfortunate. We, we, there shouldn't be any, any product specifics uh, in this standard. So uh, I think we need to do, to do a review on, on that. The, the intention is to train on the use of a rescue device uh, uh, fulfilling a specific standard as, as uh, stated in the uh, equipment uh, list for, for the specific module. So any manufacturer uh, specific product is, is not intended. It was on page six, I believe. Yeah. So a rescue device fulfilling the standards uh, as stated in the uh, in the equipment list. Uh, I think how many of you would would note this this point? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hope it answers the question. Mm -hmm. uh, next question is uh, uh, sounds like this: Do all modules of art have a 24-month validity? Um, I can answer the question mm -hmm. as well. Um, uh, all modules uh, have 24-month uh, validity, except single rescue modules. Single rescue modules are no expiry. Okay. Next question. Will it be a requirement on site as a technician to have these certifications as was a normal global wind certifications? Um, I can answer this question as well. It will be different requirements from different operators uh, or, or companies uh, because the modules, advanced rescue training standard is optional standard, meaning that uh, companies can choose uh, to implement it or not, and they choose how to implement it. So there might be a requirement out there and there might be uh, some companies working without this training. Uh, and competencies, so it's uh, it can be different from company to company. Next question: The presentation seemed to suggest there was no expiry for single rescue training. Did I get that wrong? Could you clarify, please? Um, Pierre, can you answer maybe elaborate? Uh, on yeah. no expiry part? <clears throat> yeah, to clarify, uh, there is no expiry on the single rescue modules uh, as opposed to, to all the other modules. So single rescue uh, hop spinner blade module and single rescue uh, the um, nacelle town basement module uh, has no expiry. Um, to elaborate a bit on the, on, on the background and reason for that, we've, uh, we've sort of um, our argument is that if you are uh, able in a training situation and you're trained um, wants to to be able to do the, uh, the single rescue operation um, then you will probably uh, our argument is you will be able to to uh, to execute a single rescue operation eventually uh, at, at some given time if you um, if you uh, attend the uh, the art uh, refresher uh, training, 
So uh, every second year you will have the opportunity to, to recap and have the technical and sort of rescue uh, methodology um, refreshed uh, during uh, refresher training uh, and the sort of uh, the efforts on how to do this as a single person that is only sort of brought to the test once during the single rescue modules. We believe that, um, as you may, as you may know, reading the the uh, single rescuer modules, that, from a professional rescue point of view, is primarily about planning. So it's not about operating the pulley system. It's not about how you sort of uh, organize your your uh, uh, rescue setup configuration. How you utilize your lanyards and your rescue device it's about it's about planning uh, et uh, your escape ways uh, how to ensure that you can work on either sides of the uh, of the victim uh, the injured person or, or if that's not a uh, a possibility that you sort of uh, take into consideration in your planning that you organize your entire rescue uh, effort and your setup so that you will be able to execute and, and finalize the rescue operation successfully, uh, although you're still uh, the, the only rescued person. So primarily, it's about planning and, and you will sort of recap and, and have the opportunity to refresh the elements of planning as well, attending the uh, sort of the, the standard uh, refresher uh, training, the the hub and, and the cell module refresher training. So that's our our argument. Yes. Um, this question has been raised a few times uh, already, and uh, of course, um, as a model is is of no expiry for a single rescuer, but some companies would uh, make that to uh, something else. They they may uh, require. Uh, employees to refresh single rescue mod modules as well. It all depends on the company's decision and risk assessments, how they how they evaluate it. Okay, next question. Um, is it going to be mandatory these modules for all technicians and when a company start to ask for this training? So as mentioned before, um, uh, come, uh, the modules are uh, optional to choose uh, uh, to implement or not, uh, and each company decides on that. Um, and I know already we are hearing that uh, um, uh, there is a request and demand for this course already, and some of training providers are already certified, so there is a, there is a demand, uh, definitely. Good. Um, next question. Um, in some countries, the use of cervical color is above the level of medical training that a wind technician may have. Is this okay to work on a country by country basis? Matt, can you elaborate? Yeah, I think so. Uh, of course, we always need to apply to local legislation if that's uh, an, 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 an an objection. However, what we found when we prepared this, this standard is that the, the uh, problems with the cervical collar was specifically when it was used to secure the airway, then there are limitations to it. Now, in our standard, we're not using the cervical collar as a medical treatment or a medical uh, first aid act, so to speak, but purely to, to secure the casualty for transportation and in our uh, analysis of regulations we found for that purpose it is allowed so in summary once again of course always local legislation uh, must be, uh, compl be complied with but uh, the way we intend the use of circle color it's not a first aid act but it's a uh, a way to secure the casualty for transportation so we won't be moving around too much won't be bopping around too much so to speak thank you Mets. next question 
is it necessary to do a special certification besides the annual check? Haben, can you answer this question? So, Sandra, can you repeat? Yes. Is it necessary to do a special certification besides the annual check? That I won't be able to answer. Sorry. No, I, I think the question is whether training providers need, need to be certified for that this uh, module really need separately. To. Yes, you will need to. Even though you already yeah. offer advanced rescue training, you will need to be audited once again to do the GWO advanced rescue training. So, yes. Yes, it can be, though, uh, as I understand, it can be combined with a with an annual uh, certification. So if a training provider is already BST certified and they will have auditor visiting, so they could uh, plan to do it uh, in once so saying, OK, audit the BSD, but also then certify for advanced rescue. It can be done in, in one uh, hook, but you have to have the separate certification for, for, for the standard. Yes. Okay. Next question. So then there are four certificates, two non Firing single rescue and the two of uh, 24 month validity. That is correct for the initial standard. Um, if um, as well as you, if you do the combined. Yes, and for the refresher, there will be that uh, you have to upload. Uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong, Haben, but uh, you have to upload the the nacelle um, refresher module and working a heights refresher so there will be two uploads exactly and hop as well even though it's the same content as the initial course yes correct so two or four certificate uh, four uh, window records for initial course and uh, three for the refresher correct yeah, if if you choose to do the entire package, so to speak. Yes. So if if uh, um, yes, some some will only take hub course, for example, and then there will be one certificate or one record. Um, so it, it will depend. Uh, it will depend how uh, how uh, the companies would like to order the course. Yes. Next question, Ken, will you be able to supply more detailed drawings on the mock-up needed? Mm, as it looks uh, right now, this is what we have in the standard is, is available. Um, if more detailed drawings required, um, I believe it's not something Global Wind uh, delivers, then uh, each training provider will, will have to uh, reach out to to companies who will build it for them, I believe, for, for more detailed drawings. Um, yeah, the, the if it is something that, yes, exactly. Um, but the, uh, yeah, this is how it, how it is. Mm. Next question, page 107, module five, Combined uh, global and art will only run once for a candidate. On the refresher, the candidate will only repeat module one and two. Um, let's uh, let's look at 107 page so we understand it, um, exactly what's yeah. asked. So module five combined will only run once. Yes, so combined Global Wind Art Module 5 can be uh, taken for a candidate 
then uh, the candidate will receive all the content for initial course. And on refresher, uh, the candidate will have to repeat module one, that's correct, which is hub, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, module two. I'm not sure if module two is an SL refresher in the standard. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Because module three and four are the sink or rescue on the initial course. Yes, but we have a refresher standard as well. So for refresher, the candidate will yeah. have to repeat module one, which is hub, that's correct. But uh, for the refresher, it's from the refresher standard. Ah, let me just get that. <clears throat> So page, is that still 107? I'm not sure. Let's have a look. How, called, uh, how is the module called in this uh, standard? No, that's module one. So module one is the NSL uh, module uh, during the refresher training. Yes. So for refresher, it's module one from the initial standard and then module one from the refresher standard. Yeah, yes. because there is no hub refresher module. No. That's the hub initial course module delivered. Correct. Good, next question. Does the validity change when a technician is going to work in Germany as per global wind working at height? module. Kai, can you elaborate on this question? Yeah, at least it is uh, the decision of the uh, company where they are employed. Um, of course, in, in Germany it is that we have to refresh our working at heights training uh, once a year. Um, and there are several options to do this. Uh, you can combine this uh, starting with a basic safety working at heights and in the second year you start with a working at heights uh, advanced rescue for hub for example and uh, so on so here each uh, employee uh, employer has to find their solution to cover the local legislation yes correct so the validity of the course, sorry, the valid validity of the GWO certificate will not change. Exactly. No. No. To the if question. German requirement needs to be met uh, for for the annual, uh, then the companies will will um, uh, jungle between the modules so they can fulfill the annual requirement, um, but the validity will not change. No. Next question. How many separate certifications are expected to be issued from this standard? So as mentioned before, uh, uh, from the initial, there will be four. And from the refresher, there will be three. Next question. Is it correct that a delegate can do hub, nacelle, tower, single rescue combined in three days? or is hub or single rescue on a cell tower within three days? Um, combined um, initial course of three days mm. uh, delivers all four initial course modules. So it delivers uh, uh, hub, nacelle tower, single hub, and single nacelle. Next question. If we are focusing on advanced rescue techniques, will there be a requirement for instructors to undergo further training in order they provide evidence of competence? Um, for example, they are up to date with the current rescue practices. Will the instructor then undergo assessment by global wind assessors prior to delivering a course to fee paying delegates 
Haben. I don't know, Haben, if you can answer this one. Uh, sorry, um, Sandra, could you repeat the question to us? We didn't pick that up. Yes. If we are focusing on advanced rescue techniques, will there be a requirement for instructors to undergo further training in order they provide evidence of competence? Or they are up to date with current rescue practices? Will the instructor then undergo assessment by global wind assessors prior to delivering a course to fee paying delegates? So I guess the question is about the instructor certifications. Yeah. Uh, are they uh, competent yeah. to deliver the module or need an additional training? Um, the um, global wind organization doesn't um, uh, involve itself in the certification of, of uh, instructors, uh, training providers have to follow the criteria for uh, training providers within which there are stipulations around the uh, qualifications and capabilities of the training providers. So we would always advise training providers to follow those criteria and uh, meet their, um, their skills requirements as necessary. Um, there's nothing specific in the standard uh, about this particular uh, concern. Um, if you have any specific questions about that, I would um, suggest that you contact us directly on info at GWO, uh, sorry, globalwindsafety.org. Um, Sandra, this is um, just a sort of five minute notice actually. So we're gonna take one more question um, and then the mm -hmm. remainder, if we haven't answered any more, we'll um, get back to people uh, by email and also um, produce a a report and, and publish this, as I said, online. Um, so if you want to try with the final question for us. Yes, and just to confirm your answer about the tra training staff, you can see we just uh, share with you the description of training staff for refresher module um, um, and the requirements there. So please read those and uh, evaluate if your uh, instructors are competent enough or they need additional training. Okay, and then the uh, last question. There does not appear to be any hub and spinner rescue in the refresher training. Yeah, uh, Pierre, can you elaborate? Yeah, so uh, the, uh, the hub module uh, on course content um, deals with the hub, spinner and blade rescue, so professionally. Um, there is no refresher standard for the hub module because uh, what you will do is delivering the uh, the hub spinner blade module as a refresher training you will deliver the initial course uh, module so the, the initial hub module standard would sort of be the same as the uh, the refresher standard Okay, thanks, Pierre, for that final answer. And thanks to all the panelists for your contributions today. Um, thank you for everybody for joining us. And as I said, the uh, webinar will be published online within the next 24 to 48 hours. You will also receive a quick feedback email and I'd really appreciate your comments on that, um, how well the uh, standard was explained and so on. So please do uh, take a moment just to answer it's five or six questions. It'll only take you about 30 seconds. Um, so on that note, thanks to everybody and we will uh, be signing off now. Thank you. <laughs>